Thanks to Magellan TV for sponsoring today's video. The Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, also known as SOHO, recently celebrated its 25th anniversary in space. During these 25 years, it has observed the solar wind, watched out for dangerous coronal mass ejections, and observed the atmosphere of the Sun. An unintended consequence of its observations around this region was the discovery of over 4,000 sun-grazing comets, most of which we had no idea existed until they came into SOHO's view. And SOHO isn't the only solar observatory. The Stereo spacecraft and the Solar Dynamics Observatory have all seen new comets. And what's so cool about that is that they weren't designed with that in mind at all. I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum, and in this video I wanted to look at some of the most impressive of these comets, try to understand how they interact with the Sun and how the Sun interacts with them. Sun grazers are comets that do just that, they graze the Sun as they pass, with the closest parts of their orbits taking them within a hair's breadth of the Sun's surface. Often they will pass through the Sun's huge atmosphere, called its corona. These comets are mainly long period comets, comets whose orbits take hundreds to thousands of years to complete. Because of their orbit's extreme elliptical nature, they build up tremendous speeds as they approach the Sun, sometimes accelerating to 0.2% of the speed of light, an absolutely incredible speed for a particle, let alone a house sized object. The majority of Sun Grazer comets actually all originate from one large comet that was ripped apart several hundred years ago. This group of Sun Grazers, shown in red in this video, is known as the Kreutz Sun Grazers. What tends to happen over time is that the fragments from the larger comets spread out, meaning that there is probably a steady flow of them. As the largest of these comets also pass by the Sun, they too break apart into even smaller comets. And the reason we believe most Sun Grazers originate from the same comet? Well, they all tend to follow the same orbital path. The brightest comet in the last millennium, known as Comet Ikea Seki, was probably a fragment. It was so bright as it approached the Sun, that it could even be seen during the day. You may have heard of another famous fragment of this comet, that dimly illuminated the sky in the Southern Hemisphere in 2011, called Comet Lovejoy. While Comet Lovejoy wasn't as bright to the naked eye, it did make for some very impressive long exposure images, and was seen by all the Sun observing satellites. Comet Lovejoy was not expected to survive this encounter, as it would have been in the Sun's 1 million degrees Celsius corona for more than one hour. However, astonishingly, it fizzed away from the other side of the disk, mainly intact, although probably severely impacted from the experience. The same thing happened to another comet, Comet Ison. You may remember that Comet Ison was expected to be a bright comet, potentially visible to the naked eye when it passed by the Sun in 2013. Alas, that wasn't to be. However, it still made for good viewing for the Sun observing satellites. Ison's approach was bright and impressive, and upon reaching the other side of the Sun, it faded out. Scientists can't be sure if the nucleus survived or not, but if it did, there are certainly no volatile substances on it anymore, all that's left is probably dust. However, these are some of the biggest Kreutz Sun Grazers we've ever observed. Their nucleuses may be being a few hundred meters in diameter. Some of the smaller comets were not known about until they actually came into the view of a Sun observing satellite. Due to their small size, being only tens of meters across, Many of the smaller comets were completely snuffed out by the Sun immediately after passing by too closely. Which means unfortunately, they were vaporized pretty much immediately after they got discovered. Sometimes they will pass around the back of the disk of the Sun, never to re-emerge from the other side. Although at other times, the angle of the comet's orbit means we can witness this vaporization as it happens. At this distance from the Sun, the heat is incredible and the gravity is overwhelming. The icy comets not only evaporate quickly, but the rocky elements of them are also ripped apart from tidal forces. Our own close encounters with comets show that they tend to be structurally weak and very porous, sometimes nothing more than a pile of rubble held together by its own gravity. 
So combine that with the influence of the Sun, and even the largest Sungrazer comets will come away heavily scarred. Now, there's an interesting phenomenon that happens when a Sungrazer passes by the Sun, and that is that a CME will go off at the exact moment the comet passes by. There are numerous examples of this. However, scientists are still of the opinion that there is no mechanism for a Sungrazer to cause a CME. These comets simply aren't big enough to have any consequential impact on the Sun, so it is currently believed that these examples you see here are purely coincidental. What scientists enjoy about Sungrazers though, is that while we can't send probes deep into the Sun's corona, it's simply too hot for that, we do have these thousands of comets that are willing to take the plunge for us. And comets are perfect for us to observe what we are looking for, which is to better understand the magnetic fields within the corona, so that we can better predict CMEs and space weather generally. Look how as a comet passes by, its tail wiggles. The particles in the tail get heated so much, they turn to plasma, which can easily be seen by the UV cameras of the satellites. Plasma reacts strongly to magnetic fields, so the wiggle you see in the tail is believed to be due to the way in which the tail interacts with the magnetic field lines in the corona. Currently, space weather is something we don't have a complete understanding of, so as more comets pass through, the more we will begin to understand that environment. So, there we have it, some of the most impressive looking sun grazers caught on camera by satellites that weren't even designed for them. Have you ever been fortunate enough to see a comet? What was your experience like? I'd be interested to hear your stories in the comments below. As I mentioned, understanding the sun's corona has very real implications for us here on Earth. That's because the sun's corona is the source of space weather and solar wind. You see, on Earth our electronics are actually quite vulnerable to the particles ejected from the Sun. If a sudden burst of particles heads our way in what is known as a coronal mass ejection, they can damage our satellites, and in extreme cases, knock out our power grid and internet. There's a documentary on Magellan TV that discusses this in detail, called Solar Superstorms, which looks at some of the largest solar storms on record, and how we are preparing for the next big one. You can watch this documentary and gain access to Magellan TV's library of thousands more by using my link in the description, which will give you a month free trial. This was a really high quality documentary, plus it is in 4K, so I highly recommend checking it out. Thanks for watching, and thanks as always to my patrons and members for supporting the channel. If you want to support too, check the links in the description, but also liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing really help get my videos recommended to others too, so please consider that if you found value in this video. All the best, and see you next time.